Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. In today's video, we're going to peer through the veneer, dig below the surface and talk about what really matters to avoid some common pitfalls and keep us motivated and moving forwards with our photography. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Lexar. If you need fast, reliable and high quality SD cards, look no further than Lexar. Whether you've just bought your first camera or you're a seasoned pro, it's all too easy to get stuck in a rut with your photography. So in this video, I'm going to give you five examples of where people go wrong and what you can do to fix things. And like a lot of videos on this channel, some of this is going to get a little deep. So if you like to keep things shallow, I recommend you click away now. There is not one genre to rule them all. Photography, like life, is about perspective and we can improve ourselves and our photography by gaining new perspectives, particularly in the early stages. I think it's very important to explore lots of different genres of photography. For me, even now where pretty much everything I do is landscape, I still like to keep my toe in with different genres to keep me sharp. I was listening to a podcast the other day where they were talking about a photography competition and where they were pretty disgruntled that landscape images had been judged by someone who wasn't a landscape photographer. From the competition's point of view, this is actually very smart because that person can bring a fresh perspective. And the truth is a good image is a good image regardless of genre. A competent photographer should be able to turn their hand to any genre and produce quality results because really the basics are the same where we're dealing with composition, light, perspective, shape, form, lines and colour. There are however some differences with each presenting its own unique challenges. Landscape photographers go up the hill facing early starts, wind and rain with absolutely no guarantee of a shot. I've been playing with this crazy 800 millimeter lens recently from Canon, trying to do some wildlife photography. And I just really don't think, in honesty, I have the patience for it. I once sat in a bird hive for four hours with a 500 mil lens that I'd hired to try and photograph a kingfisher. And this was the best image I got. It was horrendous. The key part of wildlife photography is being uniquely skilled and determined to get in front of the animals. I went to see the seal pups the other day and it was just way too easy to get in front of the animals. It felt just like being at a wildlife park, which means my photos look exactly like everyone else's. And because of the fence, I also couldn't get down low enough to get a decent shot. So I ended up with these two very less than average images. Wildlife photography is basically outdoor portrait photography where you want to be getting down to the level of the subject and use composition, foreground and background to create context rather than just shooting like down at them where the background is the floor. I will always do some wildlife photography in a slightly frustrated and average way because I enjoy it. I just need to go out with a decent wildlife photographer who gets me into the right place. We just don't need to pigeonhole or restrict our photography though, especially if you're just doing it for fun. I need to follow my own advice here, but get you should account up. If for example, you take lots of portrait images, it will make you a better landscape photographer and so on and so on. When I go on podcasts, I get excited because I love having great conversations, but I often find myself getting instantly bored when the conversation turns to photography. Now for a while I found this confusing because I love photography, so how can it possibly be boring? But when you look at much of the discussion around photography, it's, it's just all too often confined to this narrow place with subjects like f-stops, location coordinates and gear talk. Now there's nothing really wrong with these things, but they get boring fast. And that's because it's all focusing on the how, but as we start to focus on the why, things just expand into this fascinating and interesting place where the possibilities are endless. 
To put this into perspective, think back to a time when you were in a bar and imagine you start talking to someone you find attractive. As the conversation turns to hobbies and interests, how are you gonna sell landscape photography, for example, in a way that will interest them? What's your elevator pitch? If you talk about a great tutorial you saw on YouTube about the exposure triangle, you're gonna find yourself alone at the bar before you can say shutter speed. Photography is literally about capturing moments in time. It's about things that are universally interesting. The human experience, the relationship between ourselves and our subject, the challenges, the struggles, the adventure, and our personal journey. Think about becoming a storyteller who crafts something of genuine value rather than merely taking snapshots. I think most people that follow this path will soon find that their creativity expands, their photography improves, and our risk of being boring is significantly reduced. Now that leads us nicely onto the next one, where there is a fine line between being classy and pretentious. There is nothing worse than a pretentious douchebag that's so far up their own arse that they're looking out their nose. We're all at risk of this though, and probably all across the line sometimes, especially as we start to attempt talking about our own work in interesting ways. However, I find that a lot of people are so fearful of being pretentious and taking themselves too seriously that they go the opposite way and constantly belittle their own work, put themselves down and even undermine the art form itself, suggesting they are nothing special and only get good images because photography is easy. It's not. Be courageous enough to make mistakes. Have faith in yourself and be positive because if you don't believe in your own work, how can you expect anybody else to? The tactic I use to try and ride this line between classy and pretentious is to always maintain a practical approach. One example is I spend zero time basking in the glory of any success I might have achieved. I probably do this to a fault even and sometimes have to be forced into celebrating a success. But as soon as something is done, I usually just move on to the next thing or the next photo or the next job. I also find it really important to prioritize doing things and taking calculated risks because if you're too busy driving your photography or your creativity or your life forwards, it keeps us authentic and leaves very little time to worry or care about what other people are thinking. It's also really important to gain a different perspective and keep it real. My kids keep me real, firstly, by leaving me very little time to think about myself, but especially when I show them my photographs. Sometimes I'll have an image that I'm particularly happy with. I show it to my daughter and she's just like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's this brutal honesty that means occasionally when I get a wow, it's a proper buzz. Whoever keeps it real for you, I would just wholeheartedly encourage this to be someone in real life and not someone online. But as you know, this video is sponsored by Lexar. Now I've been using Lexar cards for years and at the moment, this Lexar Professional 2000X is my go-to card. It's fast with 300 megabytes read speeds and 260 megabyte write speeds, meaning it's more than fast enough for all your 4K footage and fast burst rate stills. Now, if you're watching this video on the release date or around the release date, then you can still take advantage of some of the genuinely good Black Friday deals that Lexar have on offer. Just hit the link down below and you can stock up on some high quality, fast and reliable SD cards for all your photography adventures in the year ahead. So yeah, show Lexar some love for supporting this channel or just grab yourself a good deal. The question I undoubtedly get asked the most is how do you start making money with photography? Now, I've made videos about this before offering the kind of practical approach to this, but it's really about understanding the value of what you're doing, whether that's your time or the final product that you produce. Many years ago, I read this quote that put into words how I've always really felt about money. It said that money is not an incentive, it's a disincentive. I don't think this probably applies to everyone, but it's a good philosophy to live your life by where essentially not having enough money is a problem that needs solving, but making money your incentive 
will never make you happy. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last year, I am sure NFTs are on your radar. NFTs and cryptocurrencies, I think are exciting technologies and NFTs have the potential to be very beneficial for artists and photographers. Having said that, after researching and observing this for the last year, I'm noticing there is a very cult-like element to the NFT space and I'm pretty convinced it's a huge bubble ready to burst. What's left is gonna be great, but a lot of people are gonna lose money. I've also noticed several photographers in the NFT space have really started to suffer burnout and depression according to them. I feel this is always going to be a risk anytime money is at the center of what you're doing or aiming for. For me, if we spend our time wisely creating a body of work that we love with no thought of money, this alone contains huge value and not only in the experience. Certainly I have found that the more you do and the harder you work, the more opportunities are going to present themselves. It's then just down to you to grab it. Now this next one is something I've been struggling with pretty much consistently over the last few years. And what I'm talking about is the friction between the experience you have whilst doing photography versus the results you get. Long before I ever became a full-time photographer, I always wanted to get good results in the form of a great photo. The problem is, is that if this becomes your main focus, it's guaranteed to spoil the enjoyment of the experience. This theme can also be found in many aspects of life even. I used to see it doing wedding photography all the time where a bride would be so focused on making it the perfect day that they forgot to actually have a good time. I've become pretty convinced that the key to happiness is finding meaning and fulfillment in your life. The problem I think is that as life becomes easier and easier, especially for us in the West, finding meaning and fulfillment becomes increasingly difficult. This is especially true over the last couple of years where we've become increasingly isolated and restricted in what we do. One of the reasons I love landscape photography is because it allows me to be outside, explore the landscape and stay connected to nature in a way that I think is vital to our well-being. I really don't enjoy doing landscape photography actually when I'm jumping in and out of a car all day. Not only do I feel this is prioritizing the, the result too much, it also often brings me into contact with loads of people and that's not the experience I'm looking for when I'm out with a camera. It's each to their own, but for me, that just doesn't feel like an authentic encounter with nature. By prioritizing the experience, although the potential for good results is less clear, it will almost always lead to greater fulfillment. The results I find do often follow though, especially if you're pushing yourself outside of the comfort zone or taking on difficult challenges or doing things that other people do not do. Whatever your starting point to this is, it's guaranteed to make you a stronger and more interesting person. And hopefully one with better pictures to show for it at the end. Right, before we go, rather than smashing that like button, if you could just press it very gently, that would really help me out. And do check out my book, which is still shipping in time for Christmas. I'll put the shipping dates down below. But yeah, go and check out my book. And that's it, I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Bye.